All right, guys. Hey, welcome to the Sky's the Limit Call. My name is Stevie. I'm excited to be able to have a great friend of mine, uh, Alondra Crenshaw, with us. Alondra is a Hall of Fame producer, so I mean, she knows how to sell a lot of insurance. Um, she is also the youngest integrity partner in the entire company, not just with Family First Life, but the entire integrity company, which is over 200 partners, which is really awesome. So um, today we're going to talk about how she's been smashing Facebook mortgage. Um, Alondra, in the last few weeks that you've been running Facebook mortgage, how many families have you protected? Just curious. I ran only three weeks in September, Steve, and I protected about 45 families in three weeks. That's so awesome. So let's dive into it, right? Um, Andre, you did everything face-to-face. -face. You went Hall of Fame face-to-face. -face. I think, you know, ever since you hit Hall of Fame, became an integrity partner, um, I don't think you tried to sell insurance on purpose, right? And then recently you were like, screw it. I'm going to, you know, get in the field, get in the trenches and sell insurance over the phone, not face-to-face. -face. Um, and you've been killing it, obviously. So there's a lot of like myth out there that are like face-to-face -face and virtual are so different blah 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 I have my personal experiences with them um so I'm curious to see what yours are how different is it how similar is it what is your perspective especially coming from a Hall of Fame producer Steve I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you that I was nervous to be honest with you because I obviously you see a bunch of people and you know, I'm like okay I know it's doable because a lot of people are doing it but I had never done it like I only knew what it was like going out, driving out, being home away, away from home for 10, 12 hours a day. So that's all I knew. So I was very nervous um, before getting into it. But once I kind of started, Steve, like, like, it's so easy to get caught up on like, oh my God, like, I need to call the close script. Like, let me see which script I like, which one looks like what I would say. And then it's just like, it just like, I had to just kind of like, okay, it doesn't matter what script you use. Like, Alondra, you know how to sell insurance. Like, all, it's it's no different than if you're in front of them. So stop getting in your head and just act as if they were in front of you. And Steve, that's literally all I'm doing. And like, and I just switched that mindset. And I've had absolutely no issues. I don't get any kickback on the social. I don't get any kickback on the bank account. Like anything you can possibly think of. What I do, I honestly, I feel like I'm actually even better on the phones because I explain everything in depth a little bit more. I'm really put a big emphasis on like just setting the table. Like I'm trying to knock out all the possible objections they're going to throw at me before we get into the actual process. So once I get them to tell me which one they want, like I am zooming through that app with them. Absolutely. See, one of the things that I've always said is like confidence trumps credibility. Right. Yeah. And like so many brand new agents, what they feel like they have to do is they go, I got to like have this script. I got to send my credentials. I got to do. I'm like, dude, if you sound confident in what, in what you do, that's all that will matter. You know, because like I, I remember like when I was selling telesales, people were like, you need to send your ID badge and your NPN and your state license. And I was like, yeah, I ain't doing that. You know what I mean? And so like, I was like, I'm just going to call them and have a conversation because I think I can get away with that. And and that's what it really was. It's like, you know, if you're confident and you believe what you do, I think that's what matters most. Um, because if I mean, this is just me personally, like people don't remember what you say, but they, they remember how you made them feel, you know? And I'm like, as a great agent, if you know how to, you know, release tension and, and bring down the guards of your agents, I mean, your clients, and you can, you know, show that you care about them and put them in the correct product. That's, that's what really matters most. So, um, so cool. So you've been, so share with us, like a lot of people run Facebook final expense. How did this Facebook mortgage thing come about for you? So I was just, dude, I was just seeing a lot of people just selling just mortgage protection from Facebook. And like, I tried various different vendors. So it's not like I'm just exclusively working one. They all work. I'm here to tell you, like, it doesn't matter where you get your leads. Like if you're wherever you get your lead if your lead knows that it's a mortgage protection like it doesn't like they they're very much aware especially like if they're going to buying them on facebook um and they're about to roll out because i know you guys are going to ask me what leads am i working i've been piloting the ones that they're about to drop into the crm um so you guys will be able to get them i just um andrew had me running them before and it's awesome, guys. People know exactly that this is mortgage protection. They know that they're going to be talking to someone. They know that there's a cost. 
they have a home. So, you know, they don't have direct express cards, you know, they have a job, you know, they have money coming in. So it's pretty cool. It's just like, to me, a mortgage lead is very, you're paying more, but it's, to me, it's a higher quality. Like I hear people what they're paying for a live transfer lead. And I would much, much rather buy a mortgage lead. That's going to be less because again, they're not just sitting there calling for insurance. Like it's not going to be like, it's going to be like, I just want life insurance. Just give me a quote. Like, this is like, I need the information. I don't have this, like educate me and help me get this in place. And then I don't have to deal about it. Worry about ever touching this ever again. So to me, that alone, like if you can, it just, I just really, really enjoy it. And, um, I feel life insurance is great. Like you can sell life insurance, but for me, I don't know if it's just like really close to home with the mortgage protection, because it's like, you actually get to educate some, something to somebody that they don't know. They think they have private mortgage insurance. They don't know what it's like whenever, you know, if they pass away, like, you know, what happens to the home? Like there is nobody guiding them in life in like financial in like any financial advice. So you really get to come in as like, I'm your teacher. Let's get this planned. You don't have to pay a financial advisor. Let's just get you set up. So you're, you're good. I'm not generating my own. I'm not paying for somebody to go. Like, I don't like, this is where I was at guys. I don't have the time to wait for somebody to go set up a campaign for my own so I can run my own leads. I'm not going to go in there and I'm not going to be messing with it. And I sure don't, I don't really want to pay someone to just go in and manage my account. Cause I know it's not that much work. So I'm like, let me just, instead of paying that management fee, I'd much rather just buy that in leads. And I'm like, somebody already figured it out. And this was kind of my mindset from even before guys, but when I was in the field, I never was like, I'm not a lead vendor. I'm not going to set up my own leads. Like people already have it figured out. I just need to call. I just need to call buy leads that people know exactly what it is. And then I can take care of the rest. Absolutely. I'm not losing time doing all these campaigns and stuff like that. What are you paying for, roughly for a Facebook mortgage? Like 30 ish. Probably? 30 bucks. Yeah. 30, yes. 35 bucks. It just depends. Yeah. So think about how crazy this is. Alondra. When we were running direct mail mailers, they were like 60, 70, 80, $90 a lead. $90. And I was paying for them, Steve. Cause I'm like, I don't care. Like they know what this is. I'm going to do it. So now that they're 30 bucks, I was like, are you freaking kidding me? I'm getting husband and wife right there. I'm getting like, and all over the phone, I'm like, bro, this is just insane. So I think these are, these are my very, very, I love these leads. Very good. leads. I, I remember when you were piling them, you're like, um, if I had these leads, I would have went in Hall of Fame a lot quicker. And I'm like, what? I'm like over direct mail. And you're like, yeah, they're by far my favorite leads. And I was like, okay, cool. I need to learn some. So just yeah. curious, what did you spend in ad in, in, in lead spend, right? Cause you're, you're paying by the batches. Um, yeah. what, what are your numbers? Like true numbers look like for that. So three weeks of buying leads. I spent like 5,500 maybe on leads for three weeks and I wrote 45 and I still have a lot to go through on that batch. Oh, yeah. We, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if y'all can do math. That's one to nine ratio. <laughs> it's like my direct yeah. ratio was one of four to five, not one to nine. Like that's, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah. well, it's because you're getting three times the amount of leads for the same cost in weekly ad spend or weekly lead spend. Yeah. Right. So that's awesome. So kind of share with us your process. Cause a lot of people, you know, by the way, I, I love what you said, you know, a lot of people that are buying homes, they're first time homeowners. So they don't know what's going to happen with their home. Matter of fact, if you tell them, Hey, you know, you're 400,000 our house. Yeah. You know, you're paying for like 900,000 hours for the house with interest. What do you mean? And it's like, you do the math and you show them, they're like, Oh my gosh. Right. It's because most of these people don't know and it's okay. Um, and it's your job to educate, kind of like what we talked about. Your job is to be the person for them because most of these people make forty, fifty thousand dollars a year. They don't have a financial planner, and it's okay, right? But the cool part is you can be that person for them. But the nice thing too, Alondra, is um, you know, can you kind of dive into like the competitiveness of Facebook Mortgage? Because here's why I say this: when you and I bought our homes in in Vegas, I don't know about you, I got like seventeen mailers in like two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I got a bunch from everywhere twice. Cause we bought homes two times. So both times without fail, bunch of leads. Right. With Facebook, unless the client's literally filling out five different people's ads or whatever it is, that lead is almost pretty exclusive to you. Yeah, I would say so. I didn't have anybody that said I already talked to somebody. Nope. It was just like, Oh, I've been expecting your call. It was pretty cool. Yeah. 
it was funny because Janelle had a chance to pilot some as well. And uh, she goes, I was calling. I was like, hey, Alondra, this is Steven. I'm getting back to you about the form you filled out online for your mortgage protection. And she's like waiting for them to be like, I'm not interested. I already got to take it. She's like, I have your date of birth as. And she's like, they never gave me an objection. I'm like, woohoo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's so awesome. And we had a brand new agent. We were like, you know, she, she, she had ran another lead vendor. And she was like, first two leads came in, booked two appointments. A third lead texted me and said, call me now. Like, that's, it's just different, right? It, because of the market and, and how, how it's all ran. So um, can you share with us how your processes are? So like, what I mean by that is like, some people, they won't call close. Some people dial themselves. Some people have dialers. Like, what do you do? And there's no right or wrong way to do business. I'm just curious to see how you're doing it. So I did both, Steve. So first I started off, let me call to close these because I wanted to have skin in the game. I wanted to be able to teach my agents. And that was fine. Like I closed, I think my third lead I called, I went through call to close the whole thing, went, just calling to hey, either you're ready or we're going to book an appointment. Um, so that worked. But then I kind of got like, I have a lot of agents that will text me or call me. So like I get I feel like I was like letting my leads like just kind of sit like a couple hours. I'm like, okay, I need them to get, this isn't working. So um, I, I just hired a dialer. I'm like, their sole purpose is just to book me appointments. And only my sole purpose is to get on my calendar. That way it helps me because it's if an agent wants help or if they just want to learn, I'll have my Zoom so they can jump on and listen to me actually do a presentation but then I'm still respecting like my schedule, like my schedule comes first. I'm on if I'm in between, like, you know, not everybody answers. So, you know, when I have gaps, like people don't answer, or, you know, either I can go back to help helping my agents or I can go through and start call to closing um, if in between my appointments. But at least like I have my eight to 10 appointments a day already. Like someone's job is to book my appointments. And it's like, there is a more cost, but for me, it makes sense. Cause I'm like, all I'm paying for is leads and a dialer. I can do the rest. Okay. Right. So it allows me to be able to multitask and get a lot of stuff done. Um, but it can most definitely be done like without a dialer. You don't need the added expense. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause you're buying your time back and you know, you're very busy. You got a very large agency to run and a lot of agents need your help with when it comes to a lot of stuff and you're building a big team too. So it's not like you can just, sit there and call people all day and neglect your team. That's not fair. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. Um, so on average, how many, you said they book you about eight to 10 appointments a day. Yep. I'm working eight to 10 a day. Let's just say I get a bunch of no shows. Um, people aren't ready to make decisions. I'll at least close like one or two a day, but the one or two a day, I'm not having that appointment with just the husband or just the wife. It's both of them and 10 Eight out of 10 times, I'm selling both policies. So I'm like double banging in that hour. I'm getting two apps, a, an appointment. Right. So it, it's working. What is your average premium per per app? Shoot, right now it's been like 200 maybe. And you get yeah, two of them. You get a husband and a wife. So it's yeah. like 400 a household. Oh my gosh, that's fun. That is awesome. Um, it's fun. It's fun. And I remember like, like the first 30 families you protected or something, you wrote like nothing but America too. Oh, all America. I'm like, like if America doesn't approve me, I'm like, crap, like, what am I going to do? And I'm all over the phone. So like, I think a lot of people are like, I need to like, go find the cheapest one. Like I need to no. like, you don't understand like, okay, for example, I had to go to, I had to go some fully underwritten almost. Um, because unfortunately, like there was situations that they had just applied for life insurance. So it's like, like I, like they already had, um, a medical coming or like, it was just like very weird situations like that. And I had to go that route and it's just been like nothing but a headache. One of them got denied. And I told them like, I don't like going this route. Cause I don't want to get you approved. Like I said that I said, first of all, I'm really selling very big on living benefits. I'm explaining them the difference of why we want to go non-medical because um, we want to try to get you the living benefits. They're going to look at your MIB and we're going to try to get you, you know, a lot of the times I don't like to talk about the living benefits and too much until I've gone over like their medical. 
but I really, really, really sell on living benefits and not having to do a medical. I'm telling them that if we're trying to go a medical, like it may be cheaper potentially, but they're looking for a reason not to approve you or this. This is just straightforward. You don't have to worry about it. It's non-med. As long as everything looks good, we can try to get you. So if you get diagnosed with cancer, strokes, heart attacks, bro, I'm lit. My whole presentation basically is just on living benefits. And if they're not healthier, I'm still pitching like the terminal illness writer comes on both. Like it comes on the whole life too. So um, honestly, like I'm taking full advantage of, I'm selling like HMS 100 up the Yahoo for everybody. They love it. Like they want the protection. They want to know that they're protected, that if something happens to them, if they get sick, I think that's also what they're seeing on the ad because they're all about it when I'm pitching the living benefits. Cool part is I think we just got 30 point raise as an entire company with HMS uh, term. It is the easiest app, Steve. Like when I tell you, like, it's just a tax signature on both parties. A lot of them are like, yeah, just email the policy over. Like it's so streamlined. Like I'm like, if I have to go to somewhere else, I'm like, oh God. And I, and I tell them like, bear with me. Like this app is not the fastest, you know? So dude, I love America. Like I told Josh, I'm like, bro, I just started and I'm going to try to get my UFARS bonus. Like, and he's just like, you have like 60 days. And then it's like in one week, I'm at like 21. And Bobby's like, what are you doing? Like, dude, we're just seeing awesome. your app roll in. And I'm like, dude, the clients, like the clients are buying you. They just, they want to know that they have something and that they're protected and they're not going to meet with anybody else. And good luck trying to replace this. Like it has a living benefits. Not a lot of people are going to get you that. I'm biased. I don't even see I'm wearing an American photo. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so let's dive into it. So um, how many appointments do you run in a week though? Like 40, 50? Because because it's virtual? Yeah. Yeah. What does your yeah. no-show rate look like? Um, I'll get like three, maybe no shows a day. But what's cool is like what I'll do is I'll text my dialer because they're dialing for me while I'm on appointment. So if they don't answer, because I'm just calling them off my regular cell phone. So right. a lot of the times it could be like they're not answering because they don't um they don't have like my 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 area code. So he'll call them and there's been appointments where I'm like, hey, this person didn't answer. He'll three way me and he'll call them, they'll answer, and then he'll transfer the phone to me. So it's like it's like been a pretty live transfer. That aspect. Like a live transfer. Exactly. That's so awesome. Cool. Yeah. So all right. So let's say, you know, Janelle and I fill out a form and your dollars called to set an appointment. When you call to do the appointment, like how do you start the appointment? Like what do you do? Okay, so let's just say I'm gonna call you. So Steve. Yep. Hey Steve, this is a launder with a mortgage protection. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Perfect, perfect. So the way this works before we begin, I do want to make sure a couple things. Um, we have uh you did list that you had a spouse. Um, is she there with you? Yeah, she's here listening. Okay. And what's her name? Janelle. Hey, Janelle, this is Alondra. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Now that I have you both on the line, um, it's important before we begin, you guys do have my credentials. Um, this number that I called you on, is it a good number to send over to you my national producer number? Yep. Okay, perfect. So you're going to receive a text right now. It's my first and last name. Uh, we're going to be going over the mortgage protection, and then you're going to get my national producer number. That is my license number that you can look me up with the Department of Insurance, and you're gonna be able to see all my state licenses. Um, you can see all my credentials on there. You can look me up at the Department of Insurance website. It's important before we begin that you have that information um, because we are gonna be going over uh, sensitive information. Okay? Perfect. Okay, perfect. Now, the way this is gonna work, it's very simple. My job, like your underwriter, is just to see which programs are gonna be eligible for you guys. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. We're gonna go over some medical questions. I'm gonna take uh, two minutes going over some financial questions. And then I'm gonna take a couple minutes to see which plans are gonna be eligible um, for the mortgage protection. So if something were to happen to either one of you, um, we have a plan set up so we're not losing the home. Does that sound fair? Yep. Okay, so the way this works is I don't have the ability to approve you as much as I would love to approve all my clients. I don't have that ability to. So all we can really do today is find a plan that's going to fit your guys' budget, take care of your needs, and we're going to submit an application to the insurance companies. It's their job to either give us a yes or a no. 
Now, the beautiful thing about working with me is that I work with over 25 different A-rated companies, and my job is to find you the best bang. I, I'm like, like your Expedia of insurance is kind of like what I like to tell everybody to kind of simplify it, okay? So we're going to find you a plan today. Whichever one looks good, we're going to submit and see if we can get you guys approved, okay? If for whatever reason that company doesn't approve you, like I said, I work with 25 different companies. So we're going to find you a company to make sure that you guys are protected. Does that sound fair? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. So let me go through this really quick. Um, are you guys pretty familiar with what mortgage protection is compared to like life insurance and private mortgage insurance? Do you know the differences? No, what is that? What is what is private mortgage? Like, don't I already have that? So I'm glad you said that. A lot of people think they actually have mortgage protection. What they don't realize is whenever you get your home, the banks require you to get an insurance that actually protects the bank. So if something happens to you, they're ensuring that the loan is going to be paid for. So they're going to be taken care of. But a lot of people think that that's actually taking care of their family, but it doesn't. All that does is it protects the bank. Now, what mortgage protection, you know, life insurance is very basic. You kind of have to kick the bucket in order to see, um, to get some money, right? So with mortgage protection, it's a little bit different. Still the same benefits that if something happens to you, if you kick the bucket, they're going to pay um, your beneficiary the amount that you're covered for. Now, I said beneficiary because, as you know, sometimes the loan companies will like sell off their loan. Sometimes you can start off with Chase and it can end up having a loan with Wells Fargo, right? So we never do the mortgage company because we want to ensure that it's going to go to the beneficiary and whoever is going to be taking care of the home, Okay. A lot of the times we're able to also do, uh, if depending on eligibility and how your health is, they'll offer you some what are called living benefits. So not only is that going to protect you if you pass away, the living benefits are going to mean that you're going to be covered for terminal, chronic, a lot of the times critical. It just depends on your eligibility and how your health is. If it's going to be eligible to you, you can be covered for strokes, cancers, heart attacks, ALS, organ transplant. I mean, basically anything that you can think of is going to fall under those three categories. Now, because of that benefit, it is much harder to get approved. Okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to see which plan is going to make the most sense to see if we can try to get you not only if you pass away, but if you get sick, you also are going to get that benefit. Does that sound fair? Yep. Okay. Awesome. So I'm just going to go through this real quick. I have here your mortgage balance is 200,000. Is that correct? Yep. And then guys, I just go, I ask every question on the financial inventory. Now, do you, like when you close three options, one option, what do you do? I looked it up. So depending, this is kind of where like people are like, how do I pitch equity protection versus mortgage protection? Try to cover the whole loan. I base it on like a couple things, guys, like age, their health, and their income. If their income is like good, but it's, I know, like, I know their age, I know it's going to be expensive. I'm really big on like the equity. I ask, what's the equity? So I'll tell them, hey, like I said in the beginning, my job is to find something that's going to fit your budget, it's going to take care of your needs. I really ask them, guys, in the presentation, like, if something happened to you tomorrow, like, what would Janelle do? Would she sell the home or would she stay in the home? I don't know. I don't know. How much of your income would go to her if you passed away today? None of it. Do you think she'd like want to size down? What do you would like? Have, I know you probably, probably haven't thought about that question, but realistically, I mean, what do you think would happen? I would think so because this is too big of a house for her if okay. she's by herself. Well, the good thing about it is that you guys do have a lot in equity, right? So if I'm going to pitch the equity protection guys, and I know that. I ask those questions because I want them to be realistic. I'm, And then I'm going to tell them, look, what makes sense for me today is to find something that's going to protect what you already have. You already have 100000 in equity. So that makes a lot of sense to how do we protect that compared to the 400000 that you may owe on your house. It makes more sense to protect the 100000 So how do we find a plan that's going to protect Janelle to cover her and buy her enough time to either sell the house, you know, moan, uh, mourn, go through everything that she's going through so she can take the money that you guys already have built into the home to make sure the bank doesn't stay and it goes to probate. So I say that because then I tell him like, Steve, I don't want you to have another mortgage payment for a life insurance if this doesn't make sense for you. I would rather you get something that 
you know that, hey, I can afford this and this is going to take care of Janelle if I don't come home. This is a plan that we have set up for the house. That's so it. I'll tell people like that. So when I show them the different options, either I'm showing them like obviously cover the full mortgage, you know, maybe a li little bit less right under and then like half of the mortgage. If I'm going to show them the equity, for, like the equity protection, I'm typically showing like whole life in random cases, it could be a term, but it's like we're protecting just part of it to buy the family time to be able to sell the home and just take the equity. I really hit on that. That is so awesome. See, because like that's the thing that I think a lot of agents struggle with is they feel like they got to cover the whole mortgage. And if they don't like like I had a brand new agent, and I love the guy. He's like, hey, she's 71 and has a four hundred thousand dollar loan. And I'm like, <laughs> good luck. You're not going to cover four hundred thousand like senior mortgage, you know, critical time period, mortgage payment protection, whatever people call it. Right. It's the same thing. You're just putting a whole life policy on the mortgage. And, and, and that's where it's like if you understand that angle, you can sell anybody. Like between you and I, like I'd rather sell a 65 year old with a $300,000 mortgage than a 25 year old that has a $300,000 mortgage. Cause a 25 year old is not going to think he's going to die. It's going to be a tough sale, although you can give him the whole mortgage. But the 65 year old's realistic. She understands that, hey, if something were to happen, my kids, they're not on the loan, they're not on the title, the house is not in a trust. It might end up in probate like me. Like you don't want that. And so they understand how painful that will be. So they're more intent and more inclined to buy. Like that's, that's the best part about that. So, you know, new agents, if you haven't had a chance to, you should definitely learn that angle because once you can sell that angle, you can sell anything here. Just being hundred percent honest. And Steven has a really, really good video on equity protection that he can share with you guys. If you guys haven't already watched it, it's Steven is mortgage presentation is very, very good. So I would add that to your list of things to do if you're planning. Thank you for the shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so when you, when you close, how many options do you show them? Because I'm assuming they're writing down the options when you're um, giving that to them too, right? So do you have one, two, three, like, cause sometimes I go, you know what, I'm going to show them one because I think this one is the best one. Like there ain't no other reason. And then sometimes I'm like, eh, maybe two, maybe three. Like what, what is your thought? I'm showing him like three or four, Steve. Um, Cause some that I'm like, there's absolutely no way he's going to go for the top one. Even though I know they can afford it. Sometimes I still, I just give it to them. Like, and then they'll tell me which one they want. And I'm like, while I'm, I, while I'm on like the miracle quote and I'm pulling up their thing, I'll tell him, Hey, go grab, make sure if you did it, go grab a pen and paper because I'm going to give you right now some numbers that you can write down. And um, and I'll literally give them the three different options. Sometimes like I'll give them like, if I'm giving them a hundred thousand and they're like older I'll, and if they can, like I'll show them like the 15 year and the 20 year mm -hmm. a lot of the times. So then they, they have an option, like, you know, they can see, you know, yes, it's going to be a little bit more, but it's going to cover me for so much more. Absolutely. Now, have you got any pushback in terms of like, I need to talk to my kids or, you know, do I have to make a decision today? Like, have you gotten any of that? So in a sum I did, I got one and this is what was frustrating for me because I knew that if I was in the home, <laughs> they're not telling me that because I'm Absolutely. just saying, I'm out of here. I can't come back. But for this, it's just kind of like, like I did it once and the guy was just like, you're being so rude. You're making a decision today. I need to think this through um uh, whatever and he flicked on me so I've learned to be, just be more gentle on that approach I'm like hey you know since we started the application like they automatically close in like the next 24 to 48 hours like I can only leave it open for so long for your for your safety like it just automatically withdraws if it's not completed you know I do know that we need to make a, a decision to you know we we want you to make a decision today so we know we, we can get you approved but you don't know kind of which one you're at so what I would recommend, let's start off with what you know you can afford. Like, you know, you can swing a hundred, a hundred bucks a month, right? Let's apply at that one. Cause first, like I mentioned at the beginning, this is very hard to get approved. We're going to, we're going for like the top, the top of the line. Like this is the max benefit with the max benefits that are going to come with it. Let's get you approved for a coverage amount. That way you guys can just sit on it, digest it. And if you come back, once we have an approval, you can be like, 
hey, Alondra, we looked it through, like, let's swing maybe the second option. We can do the 150, no problem. It's not going to be tied on. It's like, it's no problem. I was like, I'd rather we start off with something and just to get you that approval that you know you can afford. And then once you're approved, we have 30 days. So we can increase your policy. We can make any changes to it in the 30, the first 30 days. You don't have to do any blood work. You don't have to do any extra requirements. We just give them a quick phone call. We get a change, not a problem. Typically, when I explain it to them like that, Steve, they're like, yeah, let's do it. Um, but yes, I have gotten a few, but a lot of the times if I explain it like that, sometimes some are like, yeah, let's just do it. Absolutely. See, guys, that's the other thing is without a shadow of doubt, selling face-to-face -face is easier without a shadow of doubt. However, selling virtual sales, you get more appointments in. So it's a trade-off and it's okay because you're not going to win them all and it is what it is, Right. Um, but, but it, it's a convenience thing. And I think that's where, you know, some people need to understand it's like, no virtual sales is going to be a little bit more difficult because like you said, in a home, I'm going to be like apply or decline, sign my form. I can't do that on, on, on a virtual appointment, telesales appointment. So it's, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but the difference is I'm going to have 40, 50 appointments, not 22. Exactly. So I, I have a lot more shots, right. And the lead cost is cheaper. I get more leads, bigger areas to run. Like you run in multiple states, all but California. <laughs> That's you know why? Um, the MS does not have living benefits there, so I just absolutely. I won't do it. I won't do it. I don't want to go through the hassle of going through another company. It's just I got my system down. I love it because when you were face to face, you ran in Hawaii and in California only. Yes. Yes. Right. And I ran strictly in California. Granted, California is a big state. So you can go from one side to the other, like in 12 hours. But like, I say that because virtual sales, the benefit is you can do that. You can run in multiple states. You can run 48 states like you're talking about, because we don't really do business in New York. But but that's really awesome for, for a brand new agent that can you know be able to tack on so many things. And they just need to understand there is a, a bit of a trade-off. Um, so let's say you put the app through. I'm approved. Janelle's approved. How do you wrap up the deal? How do you close the sale? So I, I'll tell them like, hey, a lot of the times like it takes a day, sometimes two to go to an underwriter. They don't really give me a decision on the spot. Sometimes like if everything looks really clear and your medical looks like impeccable and the system's great, like they give me a decision right away. So, you know, typically it's going to take a little bit to, to get an answer back. And then I'm telling them this while I already have an approval on my screen. And I'm like, oh my God, Steve and Janelle, like you guys, like everything came out perfect. It came back automatically approved. Congratulations. Everything's good to go. So um, we selected the option to have it mailed to you guys. You guys are just like me. You like it old school. So you guys will be getting your mail, your policy in the mail in about seven to 10 business days, give or take. Okay. So you guys are technically stuck with me, right? Anything that you guys ever need with your policy, like you guys just call me directly. You don't have to go through the company. I can help you guys. So you're not having to wait in line. Um, the company does have a portal so you can actually, so once you get your policy, you can register so you can log in and you have an agent access. Um, you have your, like, you can log in as a client act for client access. And this is myself. So save my, save my number, any questions that you guys have, I will always get back to you the same day. If I don't get you back to you in 24 hours, I call somebody cause I probably die, but I will always get back to you. Um, anytime you guys need anything, just shoot me a text or call whatever's easiest. I love that. I love that. Um, hey, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop it in the Q&A or the chat. I prefer the Q&A because you'll lose it in the chat. Um, but is there anything, go ahead. One of the questions on here, do you feel like I threw up on you when I was explaining to you my, the intro? I don't. Okay. Guys, I, that's every, that conversation I just had with Steven is my intro. Like that is me setting the table. I don't feel like I'm throwing up. And actually at the end, I'll ask them, Hey, was that pretty, like, was that pretty simple to go through? Like, was that not painful? Like, did I do a good job explaining him the differences? Like, do you understand? And I asked them like, how did you do? Like, how did I do? Like, I'm always looking to get better. I always try to keep this as simple as possible. Cause I know it can be some like very overwhelming and we're not, nobody really tells us about this stuff. So I asked them like, how do I do like rate me? And they always tell me, no, you did it very, very simple. It was easy to follow. We, we understood it. We know what we got. And my clients are very, very happy with me they, because, because I do go that extra sweat explaining to them the difference because right. they don't know. And I don't assume that they know either. I assume that they don't know. That's so good. And see, like, 
you know, setting the table is a big deal because when I was brand new, I never did. And like everybody had to think about it. And I'm like, dude, why does everybody have to think about it? And then I learned from like the really, really good guys in our company that were selling a lot of insurance. They said, dude, it's not an objection if you say it first. And so if you say it at the very part, beginning part of your presentation, hey, Alondra, my name is Steven. This is what we're going to do today. I'm going to ask you a few questions regarding your health and finance. What I'm going to do is collect the information. I'm going to submit it to the insurance company. They're going to give me the two the three best options for you. At that point, you can apply for the coverage. Um, and then if you do, it's going to ask you for more you know, personal information like your name, date of birth, social banking, and where you want the policy sent. How's that sound? Cool. Awesome. And, and we just move on. And they go, no, I'm not giving you that. Then why would I do the appointment? You know, and, and so like sometimes it's like if you can get ahead of the curve uh, for the newer agents on here, if you can, if you can proactively do that, like there's you're not going to get very much on the back end. That's why when I, I I love doing this with every producer we bring on the call, Andre, I go, hey, how much do you get this? And they're like, almost never, very rare. And I'm like, the reason why a brand new agent feels like they get it every time is because they won't do it. That's the difference. Like, like we will go out of our way to do it, to set the table is what we call it, because we want to make sure that when it's time to close, there's not going to be any pushback because we've addressed everything that was possible for us to address. Right. And so I love that. Um, and no, I do not think you're throwing up on me. I think when you're thorough like that, your, your clients appreciate it um, more than anything else. So absolutely. Um, but do you have anything that you think uh, you can leave them with, you know, that, that we probably haven't gone over yet? I think like if like MIB before, so when I'm very smart, like after they tell me a price, right, I already have America opened up. So I'm already typing in like once they're like, okay, I want that option. I'm like, okay, let me make sure I got the spelling right. And let's all start this app. Okay. Confirm again, your name, like spell everything out for me. So I'm asking them already the question on America, like the social is like the third question on there. So I kind of lighten the blow and I first get like their, I'll get their address. Where were they born? Um, you know, what's your height and weight? Like I get all those questions after I've filled out all that question, I have to go on to the next page. Then I go back and ask them for their social. Then I'm just like, okay, so the way this works now, like I mentioned, this is going to be a non-medical. So the companies are able to give us a decision. Everything is going to be tied into your MIB. Okay. The MIB is what reports every time you've gone to the doctor, anytime they've used your social, all your medical records are going to be on there, like I mentioned. And I explained that a little bit in the in the financial inventory, but I really touch on it right before I ask them. And I'm like, so um, what they're going to do is um, they're going to send you a text right now. They're going to verify your identity. This is you. You're going to read back that code for me. Then we're going to start the underwriting process. They're going to do the basic underwriting. Everything, again, this is going to tell me right here on the spot, like if we can keep going forward and asking the questions, okay? Uh, what's your social? And like I explained, and I never get any pushback, never, never. Cause it's just like, you're explaining to them what you're going to do. They already have your credentials guys. So it's like very, you won't, you really won't. I watched a brand new agent. Like, see, it goes back to the whole confidence, tr uh, Trump and credibility thing. And like the way you said, Hey, what's your social? And you just, right. They blurred it out. I, I watched a brand new agent go, um, uh, Mary, what is your, social security number I'm like, you're not getting it <laughs> you know what I mean like I'm like dude how awkward did that feel right now right and, and I'm like but that's the thing you have to be so confident in what you're saying guys like you have to be so confident so that they're confident too if it's not a big deal for you right because the way I said it it was like I was scared to ask because it was a pretty big deal guess what they feel that way too but if Alondra goes hey what's your social like it's nonchalant because it is not a big deal guess what they feel the same well, you actually pass your energy over your clients by the way you make them feel, right? Like I see some clients or some agents, like when they get a decline or not a decline, a DNQ, they go, oh shoot, they didn't take you. Now the client's like, what? And they lose their mind. <laughs> you're laughing because you understand. First. <laughs> right? Uh, compared to like, we're like, eh, whatever. We'll go to another carrier. <laughs> like it ain't a big deal. That's why we work with 30, right? Like it's it's how you do those things, guys. That's what separates a lot of top producers and average producers is is how they make the client feel in those situations. So um, Rami has a question. It's a good one. How are your, what is your no-show ratio using Facebook mortgage? Uh, guys, I don't have my ratios. I can just tell you I'm getting like no-show like two to three times, two to three appointments a day. If I have like eight or 10. 30 so, to 40, yes. 30 to 40%, if that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, 
my wife would ask is, do you, do you ever get people asking if this is a scam? What? Uh, no, no. And then I think that's to, that's how great these leads are again. Um, and again, like people you're getting their, you're sending them guys, like before I even talked to Steven about anything else, I sent, I sent them my national producer number. I'm telling you, these are all my state licenses. You look me up with the department of insurance. You can look me up, see all my information is on there. Like I'm doing that right away in the beginning. So it's like, nobody is going to ask, like they know what mortgage protection is. They, the cool thing about the Facebook leads guys is like, they watch a video. So that explains exactly like what this is, if there's a cost, like what the difference is. And I mean, it's guys, it's nuts. Like I'm telling you, like, this is just as like, I would be watching the CRM like a hawk because I don't think they're going to announce it. Andrew told me that they're just going to just drop them in. So I would just be checking constantly, like every day, they're going to be under the, the digital ones, um, their social media. Social media, I think. I don't remember. I have to check mm. out. Um, just reach out to Steven. He'll help you. Yeah. With that's that's so funny. Um, so yeah, the, the the lead, it's different. Like sometimes I'm not saying that it's not a good idea for agents to dial, you know, a cheaper lead because that's all they can afford, or dialing some age stuff. Cause like we were very big on, you know, age mortgage protection, because you there's inexpensive, you can get a ton, but it's like you're not gonna get the low hanging fruit. You're gonna have to work to get some sales, right? Um, and, and Janelle did that. And now she's kind of like, it's just refreshing, not having to battle. Why are you calling me? You know, I already told you, no, it, it's like, it's just nice to have a lead that knows what this is for, you know? So yeah, Trey Honeycutt said it's under social media in the ILC when it comes out. So, um, Lexi said, I thought we should first establish credibility and rapport and then ask for social banking. Everybody does it differently, Lexi. And that's my answer. Um, we set the table. Uh, a lot of us, like Alondra and I, we we set the table up front. Like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna ask you a few questions. And we're gonna ask for the sensitive information later, and then after they agree to that, then we dive into financial inventory. Now, if you do it your way and it works for you, do it your way. There's nothing wrong with that. Everybody sells their own way. You know what I mean? So there's no right or wrong way. It's just whatever makes you feel comfortable, and more importantly, the client. So, um, Kathy asked you, Alondra, how do you calculate their equity? So when I ask them equity, I do the math for them. I don't ask them, do you know how much equity you have in your home? The way I ask them, it's like, what do you owe? That's a loan balance. And then at the home value, I'm like, if you were to sell your house tomorrow, what do you think you can get out of your house? And then I, I just do the math for them, whatever the difference is. If they owe, if they owe a hundred and they can sell their house for 300, I'm like, oh, awesome. So you have about 200,000 in equity. Good work. Like, that's awesome. And then I also compliment them like on the interest rate. I'll ask them like, what's your interest rate? And they'll tell me like, oh, it's like a 2.3 or three. If it's low, I'm like, oh, you took advantage during COVID, didn't you? And then they chuckle, they laugh. I'm like, heck yeah, we did. And that like breaks the ice. So like I'm complimenting them through, like I'm building the report in the financial inventory. Right. Building yeah. that credibility. Um, And the other thing too, is like a lot of people overshoot their equity, which is a good thing. Cause that's more of that they have to protect. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Like, mm -hmm. I know, like, we we go on Zillow and Redfin or whatever to go look at somebody's, um, like, what the value of the home is. So, like, if it's lower, I don't tell them it's lower. I just say what they say. Because the other thing, too, is on Zillow, they don't know what the backyard upgrades, the kitchen and bathroom renovations are. So, the client's usually more right. Now, if the client undershoots, then I'm going to use what Zillow says. I'm like, hey, you said it's, you know, 450 but on Zillow, it says 480 you know, the, 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 the market around you has probably gone up. I don't know if you know that. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So use the higher number. Um, and, and it's just simple math. It's what the house is worth versus what it's owed. That's, that's what equity is. All right. Um, Swella asks, what is Facebook mortgage? Alondra? Um, so Facebook mortgage is a type of lead. Uh, Facebook is where it's generated. So these leads are generated on Facebook. And the client is filling out the ad on Facebook. And if it's Facebook mortgage, they're filling out a Facebook mortgage ad. They're filling out all their information and it's they're letting them know that they're going to get have an agent contact them and then it's going to you. If it's a Facebook final expense, same thing. If they filled it out on Facebook and it was like a, typically they're looking for like burial or life insurance or just to cover their final expenses. So that the lead type tells you basically kind of what the client is looking for to help build in the report. Absolutely. 
Um, what is your favorite thing about telesales versus face-to-face? -face? Do you recommend new agents start with one or the other or both? Um, well, now I really love telesales because I'm like, <laughs> dude, this is like, like, dude, you're not paying for gas. You're not getting drunk. You drove around. Like if you have like a no show or whatever, like you can just pick up your other leads or do, do something really quick. Like, um, I think it's very, I think a new agent can do this, but I do think if you're wanting to get into mortgage and you are a new agent, you really have to watch videos so you can understand just the differences. Like you just need to understand to be able to explain the difference between what is mortgage protection? What is life insurance? What is private mortgage insurance? Because they're going to ask you and you need to be able to explain that. And Stephen E has two great videos that if you guys watch those, like it's, I think it's going to be really good. Like it's, it's not hard. Like, even if you're like, I don't know what carrier to write. Like there's cheat sheets that you can make sure, okay, there's nothing serious. Like everything looks good. America looks good to go. I can pop up the, the app and you guys can jump on Zoom so you can dial with other people. And if other people are in the room, like they can tell you, like they can mute and say, hey, say this, say this, say this. So I do think it's, if you're wanting to get into that, you do have to know it's like, you're going to have to spend a little bit more on your leads. So you really have to work your leads um, whether if they don't answer, like you got to text them and, you know, but I do think a new agent coming in can very easily do this, but you have to do the work to watch the videos, watch objection training, um, as much as you can. So at least when you're in the home and a client says something, it's like, you know what to say, but I think it's very, very easy. Gotcha. Um, last two questions is, have you ever had an opposing agent try to call your clients after you sold them no no yeah no. I, I think go, go ahead yeah. Alondra. no i was just gonna say typically it's like your clients are buying you like you're their new agent and also these leads guys they're not filling this stuff again like this is done and their eye is like done putting this away i don't have to touch this again yeah chris that's the other reason why we always say that like the way you close your deal is such a big deal um, you know, especially when we were running mailers, Alondra, right? We had to go, hey, Chris, you know, uh, um, we're your agent for life. If anybody calls you, just let us know. We'll call them and, and and tell them to, you know, go pound sound, whatever it is, because it's like going to the car dealership. Um, you know, when you buy the car, then they take you to the finance room. Their sole job is to upsell you. That's what this other agent is going to do. So you don't have to worry about them. Just hang up. Let them know that they called and I'll tell them to stop. Like I used to do that because we ran in a very competitive market. With telesales now where you can run in like 40 different states or way more, you don't have to do that. So yeah, not as much, but Chris, there is definitely a way we do that. Um, and then the last one is we ran into a, a couple of uh, leads where there was no equity in the home and there were seniors. How would you angle, you know, that sale? Um, I would just, again, I would, I would ask them again, it just depends on their budget. Like if I know that they have the budget to cover the home, I'm really just digging into walk me through what's going to happen. If you don't come home tomorrow, like what plan do we currently have? Like, are we going to stay in the home? Do we just kind of want to just sell it? Like I let them tell me, I don't want to make the decision for them. And I get them thinking about it. And, um, a lot of the times they're like, Hey, you know, I want my kids to try to stay in the home, you know, or no, I just want them to sell it. But, um, I think it just really goes to just to show like you, as long as you pay attention to what's their situation. Like if you know that their income isn't high, don't go showing numbers that are just like, doesn't make sense. Like keep it relative to them and explain to them, Hey, let's try to find a plan. That's going to take care of it. God forbid, if something happens to you, we have at least a plan set up for, you know, wife Janelle. Yeah, so. absolutely. Sometimes it's not always about protecting the the equity, right? That's why we call it mortgage payment protection or critical time period as well. It's all the same thing. All we're basically doing is taking a, a, a whole life policy to protect the mortgage. Now, if they have equity, it makes our job a little easier because there's something that they can lose. But if they don't have equity, it's like, I, I tell people this all the time. I'm like, hey, look, like it's very hard to buy a home and you're 65 with a home now, right? And so when, when you pass away, obviously the people that live here, what's going to happen with them? And if, if you've noticed what Alondra and I are doing, we're just very good at asking a lot of questions. We're very good at asking a lot of questions, letting them tell us the answer. And once we find the answer we like, we're going to bring it up a few times. 
Got it. So like Steve, if something were to happen to you, Janelle would like not be able to make the mortgage, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Later on, I'm going to say, Steve, kind of like what you told me earlier, if you couldn't make it home, like Janelle's going to have a tough time making the mortgage payments, right? Like I'm going to reiterate it like three, four or five times. I'm going to beat it in their mind that they need this. You know what I mean? But it's like, I need a, it's, it's like being a doctor. Like, let's say I fell on my arm and it hurts. He's going to push my arm. He's like, does this hurt? No, does this hurt? No, does this hurt? No, does this hurt? Ah, it hurts, right? Because he finally found the spot. That's what we do. We got to ask questions to be able to find the pain points of the clients. Once we know that answer, we can press literally until it hurts. And we will use that to basically assist us in getting the client protected with coverage. So that's the best way to do it. And that's how folks like Alondra that are Hall of Fame producers, that's how they sell at high level. So um, Alondra, thank you so much for hopping on. This is probably one of the best calls we've done in a while. Seriously. And it's very <laughs> refreshing uh, to be able to hear, you know, uh, someone that crushed it, you know, doing face to face and being able to pivot and switch to telesales on a dime and be able to sell at a high clip and like not even miss a step. So it talks about how great you are and uh, the amazing lead systems that we have here at Family First Life, especially for our agents. So um, if you have any questions on where to get those leads, feel free to reach up to your upline. Um, or just reach out to Alondra, myself, or whoever invited you on this call. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Have a great week. And we'll see you at the top.